very rapidly. We will first start with our football manager and then our football players in numerical order. Then we will follow with our cheerleaders in alphabetical order. And the band will follow afterwards. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is our senior night. We're going to be honoring these young men and women who have meant so much to our programs over the last four years. We are going to start first with our football manager and then our football players in numerical order. Our first senior is our football manager, Taylor Evans. Taylor is the daughter of Keith Evans and Michelle Payne. She has been the manager for two years. She is the HOSA treasurer and is in the Interact Club and newspaper staff. She plans to attend Valdosta State or the University of Alabama, get married, and have cute babies. She would like to thank her parents, Katie, Macy, and Carson. Our first senior football player is quarterback number eight, Cole Wright. Cole is escorted by Shane and Summer Wright. He has played all four seasons and has also played basketball, baseball, and track. He plans to attend West Point and play football. He would like to thank his parents for always being his heroes and everyone who has supported him throughout the years. Next is linebacker number 11, R.J. Banton. He is escorted by Rich and Colleen Banton. He has played all four seasons of football. He is also on the basketball and baseball teams and is in the Beta Club, Spanish Club, Student Governments, and UCHS Leadership Committee. He plans to go to get a degree in education. He would like to thank his family, who has always been his biggest fans. Next, we have quarterback number 12, Sean Dobbins. He is escorted by Rob and Cindy Dobbins. He has played football for four seasons and is also on the soccer team. He would like to thank his mom, dad, and brothers for always pushing him to strive for greatness. Next is cornerback number 14, Riley Barrett. He is escorted by his mom, Tiffany, and cousins Beth and Matthew. This is his first football season. He also runs track. He plans to run track at the next level and become a veterinarian. Next is linebacker number 15, Cole Dockery. He is escorted by Jamie and Tina Dockery. He has played all four seasons and is on the basketball team. He plans to go to college and come back to Blairsville. He would like to thank God, his family, his bros, and more than anyone, his dad. Our next senior is wide receiver number 18, Logan Dyer. He is escorted by Tim and Sharla Dyer, as well as Ashley and Allison Fair. He has played all four seasons and has also played baseball. He plans to go to college, play baseball, and to major in sports medicine. He would like to thank his family for pushing him to be the best and to give all glory to God. 
Next is wide receiver number 22, Austin Petit. He is escorted tonight by Brian and Crystal Petit, as well as his sister, Haley. He has played all four seasons. He is also in the Beta Club and plans to get a business degree. Next, we have cornerback number 33, Jacob Ross. He is escorted by Charlie Ross, Maloli Holm, and Ethan Ware. He has played for two seasons. He also plays soccer. He plans to join the Air Force and go to college for aviation and business. Next, we have outside linebacker number 34, Brian Nelson. He is the son of Lisa and Gene Nelson. He has played football for four years. He is also a wrestler and on the track team. He plans to go to Life University and study chiropractic. Next is defensive lineman, number 52, Buddy Vieira. He is escorted by Tina and John Vieira. This is his first season playing football. He is also on the baseball team, FFA, and Skills USA. He plans to join the Marines and to grow closer to his Lord and Savior and live life to the fullest. Next is defensive lineman, number 53, Matthew Bicey. He's the son of Pia Kluth and Kurt Bicey. He has played all four seasons. His future plans are to go to college and to make money. Our next senior is defensive end number 62, Del Ruff. He is escorted by Del and Tracy Ruff. He has played football for two seasons and also plays baseball. He plans to go to college and further his education. Next is offensive lineman number 65, Hunter Hogsett. He is escorted by Sam and Shannon Hogsett and his brother, Wright. He is in the FCA, Beta, Recycling, Chick-fil-A Leaders, and Student Council. He plans to attend a four-year college and to become an English teacher and eventually go into the mission field. Next is offensive lineman number 70, J.B. Buzzard. He is escorted by Sue and Jeff Buzzard, as well as his brother, Chad. He has played four seasons and is also on the track team. He plans to move to Florida and attend a four-year college. Next is offensive lineman number 76, Clay Carroll. Clay is escorted by Donna and Clyde Carroll and Pat Everett. He has played for three years and is in Skills USA. He plans to start a career after high school. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give these football players a big round of applause. How much these young men have meant to our program over the last few years. And gentlemen, I know that y'all will be heading on out right now to uh, get ready for the ball game, and we wish you the best of luck. Next up, we are going to introduce our cheerleaders, and this will be done in alphabetical order, and then we will be following them immediately by the band. Our first senior cheerleader is Alyssa Byers. She is escorted by her parents, Heather and Justin Byers, as well as Dylan Byers. She is a bass and has cheered for three years. She is part of the leadership program, theater, chorus, student ambassador program, and has played soccer and cheers for basketball. She plans to get a degree in criminal, 
psychology. She would like to thank her friends and family for always supporting her. Next is Katie Dixon. She is escorted by Brian and Don Davenport and Nathan and Jenny Dixon. She is a base and has cheered football and basketball cheerleading for four years. She is in the Beta Club, HOSA, Junior Board, Environmental Club, and Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy. She plans to major in biology pre-med at UNG and hopes to work in pediatrics. Next is Hannah Lickie. She is escorted by Jennifer and Sean Lickey. She is a back spot and has cheered for three years. She is in the DEC Club, Incubator Program, Student Leadership, and Ambassador Program. She plans to attend Kennesaw State and major in business and communications and do whatever God leads her to do. She would like to thank her mom and dad, her favorite Nana, and her great-grandma Rich. Next is Sierra Luima. She is escorted by her parents, Shanetta and Matt Davis, and her siblings, Momo and Matthew. She is a back spot and has cheered for four years. She plans to attend Kennesaw State and major in business and communications. She would like to thank her parents for their endless love, and especially her mom, because without her, she wouldn't be the woman that she is today. Our finer, final senior cheerleader is Amy Parks. She is escorted by Tina and Norma Parks. She is a flyer and has cheered all four years. She is also in chorus and recycling club. She plans to attend a Christian college and let God lead her throughout her life, travel the world, and meet the man of her dreams. All right, fans, let's give your Panthers cheerleaders a big round of applause for all that they've done for the Panthers throughout these past four seasons. And now we will do the band seniors. Our first senior from the band is J.C. Allen. J.C. is being escorted tonight by his parents, Michelle and Carl Allen. J.C. has played tuba in the band for the past seven years. After high school, J.C. plans to go to college and major in computer science or mechanical engineering. Next, we have Anthony Grader. Anthony is being escorted by his grandparents, Dan and Jennifer Grader. He has been a part of the band for seven years and plays saxophone. After high school, Anthony plans to attend college at the University of Kentucky to pursue his music education and music performance degrees. He then wants to return to Union County High School to take Mr. Stafford's job. Next, we have Elena Griggs. Elena is being escorted by her parents, Joanna and Mitch Griggs. She has played clarinet in the band for the past seven years. After high school, Elena plans to attend the University of Georgia and double major in management and international business. She'd like to give many thanks to her friends and family for their continuous support. To her beautiful clarinet section, she is, be she is beyond proud to be your section leader. To the whole band, she will miss you all so much, and she's thoroughly enjoyed being, with being your band mom. Next, we have Gabby Jennings. Gabby is being escorted by her parents, Jamelia and Timothy Jennings. She has been in band for seven years and is currently playing mellophone for the UCHS Pride of the Mountains Marching Band. After high school, Gabby plans to attend college, hopefully at UGA, and pursue a degree somewhere in the field of biology and ranch it all up. She would like to thank God, her family, and her friends for putting up with her. Next, we have Tyler Johnson. Tyler is being escorted by his mother, Karen Hicks, stepfather, Brandon Hicks, and brother, Matthew Johnson. Tyler plays tuba and has been in the band for seven years. After high school, Tyler plans to attend the University of North Carolina. After college, he plans to get a job and then to start a family. 
Our next band member is Emily Crossgoff. Emily is being escorted tonight by her mother, Christy Bishop. Emily has played percussion for the last four years in band. After high school, Emily plans to go to a four-year college and pursue a career in information technology and become a graphic designer. She is in the process of deciding where to go. Next, we have Allie Kumler. Allie is being escorted by her parents, Christy and Allie Kumler. She has played clarinet in the band for seven years and has been in the marching band for five. After high school, she plans to follow the family tradition and attend Louisiana Tech University and major in biomedical engineering. She would like to thank God, her parents, brothers, friends, and teachers for helping her grow into the person that she is today. Next we have Danielle Lindsay. Danielle is being escorted tonight by her parents, Elizabeth and Michael Lindsay. She has been in the color guard for the four years. Danielle hopes to acquire a bachelor's degree in social work from the school UGA of Social Work and specialize in dual housing recovery facilities for men and women. She would also like to live abroad at some point before settling in a U.S. city with takeout Japanese delivery. She's a simple woman. Next, we have Kat Malahan. Kat is being escorted by her mother, Glenda Malahan, and her father, Kevin Malahan. She has played trumpet for six years. After high school, she plans to study music education at the Young Harris College. Our next senior band member is Kristen Odom. Kristen is being escorted tonight by her mother, Lisa Pace, and father, Kirk Odom, stepfather, Thomas Pace, and sister, Lauren Pace. She has played trombone in the band for the past seven years. After high school, Kristen is going to go to a four-year college. She hasn't decided on a college yet. She and her best friend, Rebecca, are planning on attending the same college as well as dorming and living together. Our next se senior is Emily Rittenhouse. Emily is being escorted tonight by her father, Carrie Rittenhouse, and mother, Julie Rittenhouse. She has played drum bone in the band for the last six years. After high school, Emily plans to uh, attend Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College in Tifton, Georgia, and major in agricultural business. She would like to thank her family for all their support and Mr. Jennings for never giving up on her and directing her on the right path. And our final senior from the band is Rebecca Wood. Rebecca is being escorted by her mother Peg Peggy Wood as well as her brother Ben Wood. Rebecca has played percussion in the band for seven years. After high school, Rebecca plans to attend a four-year college with her best friend Kristen Odom. She will pursue a degree in anthropology, art restoration, and museum studies. She is not certain on which college she will be attending, but it's in the process of choosing the right one for her. And at this time, if you would give a big round of applause to the band class of 2018, you guys have done a great job over the years, and you would do a great job at making some noise for the Panthers. Thank you.
and the crew at 95.1 bringing you tonight's ball game brought to you by Union General Hospital for 50 years this community's caregiver we appreciate uh, what they do for us here at WJRB Bannon County two and six Union County four and four both teams looking for their first win in region seven triple a as we've got Cole Wright and RJ Banton out uh, to do the coin toss and uh, let's see what we uh Trying to figure out who won the toss. The other seniors standing there in a uh, kind of a different look because all the seniors are uh, part of the uh, coin toss, whereas in the past it's just been the two or three senior captains. Let's run through the list here real fast of seniors. Cole Wright, R.J. Banton, Sean Dobbins, Riley Barrett, Cole Dockery, Logan Dyer, Austin Petit, Jacob Ross, Brian Nelson, Buddy Vieira, Matthew Bicey, Hunter Hogsett, 
Jeffrey Buzzard, and Clay Carroll. Those are your 15 seniors. And here come the Panthers. And now here comes Spannon County out on the other side, and Tim Hunter, the historian, will have to tell me, uh, but they're carrying American flags. I guess the Rebel flag motif is done for the uh, Fannin County Rebels. Tim, is this new, the American flags for Fannin? At what point did the Rebel flag become the American flag? Or have you, uh, I have not seen, I think the last time that we played, they were carrying the uh, the Confederate flag, but I guess it's a, they're still playing Dixie over there. So you, you got uh, you got a little bit of the, a uh, little bit of the heritage over there for Rebel, for the Rebels. So we're about a 20 seconds away from the uh, kickoff of this football game and a big rivalry game that it is. We have had the better end of this since 2013. That was the last time that Fannin beat Union. The last three years have not been particularly close, although I do recall that the 2015 game in Blue Ridge was awfully close. In fact, Fannin County led going into the fourth quarter before the uh, Panthers were able to put four touchdowns up and ended up winning that football game 48-28 to in what was a great season for the Panthers as they were uh, finishing up a 9-1 season or in the process at the time. Well, it looks like that uh, we have lost the toss and Fannin is deferring to the second half, so we will receive the first half kickoff as Fannin County gets ready to do that very thing. And we are just seconds away from bringing you week nine of Fannin County, Union County football, one of the great rivalries in the North Georgia Mountains. And away we go, a short kickoff is going to be taken at the 10-yard line. Moving north to south, now making a little move and tackled pretty quickly right at the 30-yard line. Shaden Schaefer bringing back the kickoff tonight. Shaden did not play in the North Hall game two weeks ago. Uh, had an injury, and that showed up. I think uh, Brian will tell you, and the defensive coaches will tell you, that we are, are a better team with Shaden Schaefer out on the field. He's a, he's a Wolverine. He's a scrappy kid and plays a tough uh, brand of safety in the defensive secondary. So Cole Wright getting ready for his last snap, at least at home, as a senior. And the first snap of the game is going to be Cole taking it himself. He's up over the line of scrimmage, twisting over the 35 to the 36-yard line and near a first down on the first snap of the season, of the uh, ball game, rather. You'll recall that Cole went down in that GAC game and what was not a violent hit of any sort, he just twisted his foot nobody touched him and he has not been the same really for the last month Brian tells me it's only now that his starting quarterback is at hundred percent it looks like somebody jumped there on the Union offensive line and me thinks it'll be backed up five yards Panthers still have a chance with the last two victories of the season to equal the best ever senior class in history that was set last year. Should we win six games, that would match the six games of the freshman year of last year's team, if you follow the math. And uh, that will be something that I'm sure the senior class will want to at least share in part, being the winningest class in the history of the high school, which goes back 60 years. Second and six now, quick throw and catch at the 37, 38 yard line. That's senior Austin Petit who's going to struggle to get to the 40-yard line. Not quite get there, but will be enough for a first down, and the Panthers have their first one of this evening. Chains move on the far side. That's Austin Petit, who has really come into his own. As I say, nobody will ever confuse him with uh, Usain Bolt, but he is a very sure-handed kid and catches everything thrown his way. First and 10 now. We're going to give it around the near side 40-45 yard line. Tip toe and chip Chad Buzzard running hard now over the 50 and is going to have uh, what looks like first down yardage up over the 50 yard line to the Fannin 48. Fannin and Lumpkin played an old school game uh, two weeks ago. It was Lumpkin beating Fannin 10 to nothing. And this uh, classification in this region, that's really uh, quite a score where the typical score is like a 50 to 40 sort of thing. It was 10 to nothing. So Fannin can play a little defense. All right, now Cannon Hemphill is going to catch one here on the near side and he'll be pushed forward over the 45 to the 44-yard line. Good pickup on first down for Cannon. 
Cannon just a junior, and he'll get a lot of balls thrown to him next year. Ball marked at the 44-yard line of Fannin as the Panthers are on the move left to right. We are glad that you're with us here on 95.1 WJRB. Chad Buzzard back. Now we've got some jumping by some big kids in the white jerseys on the Fannin side. We'll see if they were drawn off. That's always the question that you ask. As the white hat confers with another black hat. And the Panthers are going to march in a favorable direction. Pick up the five-yard line, and it was offsides on Fannin. So that's second and one now to the 39-yard line. First down marker at the 38. Snap to Cole. Cole's going to keep it and drop it and fall on it, so it'll be a loss of three back to the 41-yard line. Cole got ahead of himself a little bit there. I think he saw a hole. And just based on the way I've seen Cole play, that looked like one of those patented 15, 20 yard, maybe more type gains, but he dropped it. And it's third and four now from the 41. Once again, got to get to the 38 to keep this drive alive. Fake it to Buzzard. Cole's going to keep it. 40 yard line, 35 yard line, knocks a kid over down up to the 30 yard line as the Union County sideline comes alive. Cole Wright just trucked a big kid. And that'll be a first down for purple and white up to the 31 yard line. Cole Wright can do most anything he's asked to do and that occasionally means running over a kid. That's not the first time this year that he's put his shoulder down and really rammed somebody 30 pounds bigger. Now back to pass is Cole, little swing pass out of the backfield, caught by Buzzard at 30. Knocks kid over 25, down to the 23 yard line. Tackle made that time by Mason Rhodes, a linebacker for Fannin County. Just three minutes into this ball game, no score. Panthers on the move. Going left to right after an eight yard pickup, it's now second and two. <laughs> the sun has set completely here in Blairsville. And now we've got more jumping around. And the third flag now in the first three minutes concerning the line, and two of them have been against Fannin. So that will give us another first down. And the ball now marked inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. Clock resumes. Cole Wright in the backfield by himself. He's got five eligible receivers. Now he's going to roll to the left. Cocking as if to throw now. Going to put his head down. He's up to the 15-yard line. Now to the 10. And run out of bounds at about the 8-yard line. This is the Cole Wright that we saw in all of 16 and much of 17. And you knew, you knew at East Hall that something wasn't right. You knew in that ball game that we really needed to win at East Hall. And then again, of course, at North Hall two weeks later, we needed him healthy. And the schedule just lined up against us this year. Now first and goal from the eight yard line. Going to give the ball to Buzzard, and he's hit hard. He's hit hard at the 10. That was a play that didn't develop, and by the time he got the little wind going, Big Kid uh, was able to knock him down, and his name is Mason Rhodes, who makes his second solo tackle on this drive. Panthers in constant motion, never huddling. All plays relayed in from hand signals. Second and 10 now. Two-step drop for Cole. Going to throw a pass, and it's going to be incomplete. Trying to hook up that time with Sawyer Drake on a skinny little slant, and Sawyer wasn't a far up the field as Cole thought he was. And that'll be incomplete and bring up third and 10. So the Panthers for the moment have sputtered and let's see if we can make a big play here on third down. Important win on any number of levels as the Panthers want to obviously avoid a losing season. Third and 10 now, Cole right back to pass, eyeing the end zone, throws the ball into the end zone, got a man and caught and it is, oh, dropped. He had it for a second. And just wasn't able to bring it down. That's Sawyer Drake. Sawyer jumped up in the air to grab it. And as he came down, he was hit pretty good by a fan and kid. Dropped the ball. And that'll bring up fourth and ten. And it's Brian Smith time. And I was informed by eminent historian Tim Hunter that Brian Smith is now eight points away from scoring 100 for his career 
at Union County, and he would get three of them right here. Pearson Allison with the spot, and I don't, yeah, he got it, he sure did. Kick is good for Brian Smith, and the Panthers have scored first. Three nothing with eight minutes left, and we're back in 60 seconds as Union General brings you the Panthers on WJRB. Panthers kicking off after the Brian Smith field goal, and Smith once again knocking a ball into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and Fannin County will start its first drive of the night at its own 20-yard line. Panthers went uh, 75, well, no, they went 65 yards down the field. They were stopped at the 10-yard line, and that's where Brian Smith was able to hit the field goal from 27 yards. He's just a junior. Brian Smith of the soccer-playing Smith clan He'll be back again for his senior year, assuming the college life doesn't want him first. So first and 10 for Fannin County at the 20. And the first give is not going to be for much as the Rebels are hit right at the line. Brian Smith making the play. And no gain for the Rebels second and 10. Looking for the snap. Now the give, and once again, nothing happening right there. As the running back is Cody Jacobs, who's had a nice year for Fannin. And the left side of the line making short work of him. Going to bring up third and long. They gave him three. Not sure quite how he made the 23 on that. But third and seven. And the Rebels looking to convert here. Going to give it once again to Jacobs. Jacobs running hard and falls short of the 30-yard line. R.J. Banton there to knock him down. Jacobs a big kid. Looks like about a 6'3", 6'4", type guy. And going to bring up fourth down, and out comes the Fannin County punt team. So the Panthers on defense have done their job right off the bat. And Cannon Hemphill. Cannon has not broken one this year. I think this could be the game where he's waves off the fair catch and decides he's going to take one to the house. What do you think? He's standing back at the 40. The punt off and a decent punt is going to be taken at the 35. Cannon's going to run it and Cannon will get over the 40 and squirt his way up to the 42-43 yard line and that's where Cole Wright and the offense will start drive number two. Three nothing Union County Panthers leading the Fannin County Rebels about halfway through this first quarter. You can always catch these ball games on RidgelineTV.net. Or for old school analog people, it's on Windstream Channel 99. No matter wherever, where Windstream is, Channel 99 is there somewhere, usually between 98 and 100. First and 10 from the 42. Cole Dockery running to get off the field. And a flag. And are they going to get us for an illegal substitution or too many men on the field? I wouldn't tell you Cole Dockery was running all that hard to get off the field that time. I mean, I think Brian Allison is in his ear right now saying, you know, oh, by the way, I want to see 100% effort when we're trying to get a playoff. First and 15 from the 37. Buzzard in motion. Snap. Cole's going to keep it. He's up the middle. Makes a great move at the 40. Now the 45-yard line. Gets by another kid who wrestles him down at the 50-yard line. 
And that'll be a first down for the Panthers, tackled by Bailey White, a defensive back for the Rebels. And that's just vintage Cole. I can't come up with a better adjective than that. That's just what he does. Heading for the Hudson River in New York to play for Army. And there's been much, uh, much said and written about that. Second and two now, Cole throws, caught by Cannon at the 45-yard line, twists around to the 43. Cannon Hemphill has first down yardage for the Panthers. And the Panthers moving very efficiently here in their early going. Ball marked at the 44. Nobody in the backfield this time for Cole. Cole clearly a different player. You can see it. And now they're going to blitz, and he's going to step up and run right through the hole. He's at the 40 now, the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20, and tackled just short of the 15-yard line. Another great burst up the middle by Cole Wright. Finally brought down that time by Jonah Henry, a defensive back for Fannin. Just too many options for Cole. He's just got too many things he can do. First and 10 from the 17. Back with Cole Dockery, going to give it to Cole. And now Cole looking for room at the 20-yard line, puts his head down and fights for yardage up to the 15. Good head of steam that time by the senior Cole Dockery, who has been a big part of this Panther team really for the last three years. He may have suited up as a freshman. I don't know that he got in a whole lot that year, but uh, has certainly made a contribution last year and was out there a lot his sophomore year too. Panthers looking to make this a 10-point spread with a score. They lead it 3 to nothing. Second and nine at the 16. Going to do a little end around with, with the Cole Dockery. Trying to find a corner. He does. 15-10. Five-yard line. Looking for the goal line. Didn't quite get there. He'll be knocked out of bounds at the three. A 13-yard gain for Cole Dockery. And the Panthers are right there on the doorstep once again. Senior night, and the Panthers trying to make the most of it. Give the ball to Cole again. Cole looking for the end zone. He's going to fall forward. Did he fall in? No, he's going to be just short. He'll get to the one-yard line. Cole doing what the great running backs are taught to do, which is to fall forward, whether that's on your back or your stomach. And I thought he might have gotten in there, but he didn't. Second and one. Give it to Cole again. Into the end zone, and that's a touchdown for Union County. The senior Cole Dockery, the standout, Offensive player on that drive has made it nine to nothing with an easy one yard stroll into the end zone. Actually, he would probably tell you that was not a stroll. He had to hit a kid, but had no real problem getting six that time for the Panthers. Brian Smith out tonight, out to, to make it 10 to nothing. Pearson Allison, ball down, kick up, and kick is good. 4-16 left in the first quarter. The Panthers are up 10 to nothing. Thanks to Union General Hospital for bringing you Panther football on WJRB 95-1 FM. Kickoff taken by Fannin County at the six yard line and up over the 20 and not quite the 25 yard line as a bunch of Panthers jumping up on the stack. You can see there's some kids that are fired up tonight. We lead it 10 to nothing over Fannin County about eight minutes into this first quarter. Towns County is playing for a lot. Not since dinosaurs roamed the earth have the uh, Towns County Indians ever made the playoffs, but this could be the first season that they do. And they lead Lakeview 7-0 halfway through the first quarter. The 
excited about our neighbors down 76. As Fannin County comes out onto the field, the gift to Jacobs again, a little ahead of steam, 25, 26, 27 yard line and tackled by the middle of the Panther line. It's like uh, Nathaniel Ledford in there. Jocks, Jackson Colwell helping make the tackle. Maybe a two yard gain. Yeah, more than that. He's got five. Second and five from the 28. Snap. Now they're going to throw the ball. Caught at the 25 yard line. Now the 30 yard line. We hit him pretty good. Pearson Allison slinging him down at about the 30 31 yard line. It'll be a couple of yards short of a first down, and Fannin will go uh, into its huddle looking for a third and two. Actually, Fannin doesn't huddle either. First uh, somewhat cold night here in Blairsville. Usually is cold long before now. So third and two at the 31 yard line. And they give the ball to Jacobs and Matthew Bicey's gonna hit him. Gonna hit him for a loss. Matthew Bicey the senior coming up with the best and biggest defensive play of the night so far and out comes Fannin County's punt team once again. The big fella swallowed him up. And once again, Cannon Hemphill heading out to field a punt as the Panthers off to a good start, up 10 to nothing. About 10 minutes into this football game. Bannon beat Gilmer by a slim margin early on. Of course, we beat the stuffing out of Gilmer in our opening game of the year. Snap. And the punch the line dry, but a decent carry, and it's going to bounce at the 25 and take a huge rebel roll. And this one may plant all the way down at the two-yard line. Holy cow. So we'll call that a, let's do some quick math there, a 67-yard punt. Wow, that'll get you a scholarship somewhere if you can do that every time. And Cannon Hemphill probably wondering why I didn't back up about five yards on that. And Cole Wright will have to go 98 yards this time. So Panthers are their back to the end zone. So far it's been pretty easy work for Cole Wright and the Panther offense. He's back with Chad Buzzard. Snap, give it to Buzzard. Up to the two yard line, spinning around, maybe got a yard. Or he's hit by a couple of uh, Rebels. Billy Mitchelly, the tackler for Fannin County. Give him two yards, second and eight. Cole back with Buzzard again. Looks back at the Panthers sideline. Taking up a lot of time on the play clock here. Snaps it. Cole's going to keep it himself. He's up to the five yard line, the seven, eight, nine yard line. He's going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards. Almost looked like a, a busted play there for a half a second, but even if it was, Cole got a pretty nice uh, pickup out of it. Give him six. And now it's third and two from the nine. Coming up on the final seconds here in the first quarter. Give the ball to Buzzard, and Buzzard is hit by the middle of the uh, Rebel line and is pushed back. Pretty good lick that time, put on by number 62, Clay Holloway, a defensive lineman for Fannin. And now it's fourth and two, and out comes the punt team. Brian not taking any chances on this one. Lakeview Academy has now tied the game up 7-all toward the end of the first quarter in the Towns County Lakeview game. 20 seconds left in the first quarter here. We're getting set to punt. That's RJ back there. RJ, for all of his talents, he may be as good a punter as he is at anything else. He's had a wonderful year as a punter. Snap to him. Punt is high. And going to hit the ground at the 40, take a Panther roll for a couple of yards. And it will be down right at the 44, so Fannin will have pretty good field position. When we come back for the second quarter, we played one, 
Back for another 12 minutes. It's 10-0 Union County over Fannin County. And we're back at 60 seconds on WJRB. Back for quarter number two, and we are glad that you are also. You're listening to Panther football on 95.1 WJRB-FM. Panthers have scored a field goal and a touchdown in the first quarter of play, and we lead it 10 to nothing as Fannin takes over after the punt by Union. They've got good field position at the Union 44-yard line as the referees have a little convention on the far side. I don't know what they would possibly be talking about here as any action was settled a minute and a half ago. Senior night here in Blairsville. First night where we've seen some layering out in the crowd. We've got a lot of hats and coats and sweaters and a little bit of camo here in the Panther crowd tonight. Bannon traveled pretty good as they're filling up the visiting stands on the far side. And still a, a stoppage in play here. Brian stands there, chewing on a referee's ear, like, what are we doing here? And we're finally back to action. First play of the second quarter coming up right here. The name of the quarterback is Tyler Norton. He's going to give the ball to Jacobs, and Jacobs has got running room over the 40-yard line up to the 38-yard line. Jacobs is obviously their meal ticket tonight for Fannin. Jackson Colwell playing linebacker, bringing him down. That was a seven-yard, eight-yard pickup, and it'll be second and short for the Rebels. Norton back with Jacobs. Norton's going to fake it, and we're going to nearly pick off the ball, and we don't. We read that thing like a book, and it was Sean Dobbins who saw what was happening, jumped right in front of the intended receiver, and I think the receiver was able to kind of shake up Sean where he couldn't catch the ball. Otherwise, that would have been... Perhaps a touchdown, if not, a pretty good interception return. I'll tell you what. I mean, we must have been in their huddle because Sean Dobbins knew exactly what was going to happen on that play. And that'll bring up third and three. Jacobs back with the quarterback. I guess they're running a little bit of a wildcat thing right now. As he's standing back with Jonah Henry. And I guess we've got a timeout, but we're going to keep the broadcast here. And remind you that the world's largest outdoor cocktail party happens tomorrow at 3.30, Georgia and Florida. This is the one we've been circling on the calendar since August. And seven victories to start off the season makes this to the all-important Georgia-Florida game really in the last several years. It's been a while. It has been a while since we've beaten the Gators. It goes back to 2012. We've lost four straight times. And some of those games where we were the heavy favorite. But tomorrow we are definitely the favorite as the number three team in the country, just trailing Alabama and Penn State. Will the dogs do it? You can find out right here tomorrow. Well, not right here, but in the family of stations on Lake 97.7 FM. We're on the air at 11.30 tomorrow on our sister station, WJUL, Lake 97.7. Third and three as we come out of the timeout. And here's Fannin County. And it's going to take a little wildcat up to the 35-yard line and struggling for that first down marker at the 34. Both piles still pushing each way. We'll see where they mark it. I'm not seeing that he broke the 35 according to the spot, and he didn't. 
And that's going to bring up fourth down, and I would think that Fannin would probably go for it in this situation, as they've got to get to the 34 of Union. They're right now at the 36. That was Fannin, by the way, that called the timeout, and now Fannin shows no uncertainty as they're going to go for it on fourth and two. Jacobs in the backfield. Jacobs is going to run it himself, and Jacobs is going to get first down yardage now to the 30, 25, 20 yard line, and finally pushed out of bounds by Riley Barrett. But I tell you what, if you're a Washington Redskins fan, it looks just like a John Riggins touchdown right over left tackle. Meanwhile, it looks like we've got a flag here after the fact. Good pick up that time by the big kid, Cody Jacobs. I thought for a half a second we might be able to make a shoestring tackle in the backfield. No such luck. Now let's see what the flag was. And it may be a late hit on us. Yep, I think we hit the kid out of bounds a little too late. And that'll tack on extra yardage for Fannin as they have their first serious drive of the night early here in the second quarter. We lead it 10 to nothing on senior night. All the way up to the nine now, just inside the 10. First and goal from the 10. Bannon trying to get into the end zone. Jacobs in a Wildcat. Actually, they're going to give it to the other kid, Henry. He's up to the 10, the 5, heading for the end zone. Touchdown, a little showboat that time for Fannin County's Jonah Henry. As he kind of gives a, hey, look at me, everybody, as he gets right over the goal line, and it's now 10 to 6. Fannin County is on the board. These kids know each other. These are the kids that, uh, you know, grew up together playing rec ball and, and all that. This is as big a neighborhood rivalry as Towns County is, I guess. Maybe even more so. Bigger school. And now out for the extra point, and not a lot of height on that one or authority, but it is good. 10 to 7 with 10.45 left in the second quarter, and we're back in 60 seconds on WJRP. Fifteen seniors for Union County trying to play their last football game at home and come out of it with a win. We lead precariously 10 to 7 after the Rebels have just scored a touchdown. And again, our margin only three points as we uh, get ready to see the Fannin County kickoff. Just a minute off this second quarter clock. And the kickoff is a line drive bouncing at the 20, skidding along to the 8. That's where we'll pick it up and move it forward. And Chayton Schaefer is going to be tackled solo style at about the 18-yard line. So good special teams play by the Rebels that time. And Cole Wright will not have quite the hole that he was in last time when we were backed up at the two. But it won't be a terrific uh, field position for the Panthers. Towns County has scored again to make it 14-7. to Mr. Everything, Zach Davenport, has scored on a 60-yard touchdown to start the second quarter. Lakeview is apparently pretty good. This is not going to be a, an easy win if we're able to get it. Back to this ball game, we've got Cole Wright and a man in motion is Cole Dockery. Cole Wright steps up now, looks as if he's going to run. He's at the 20 and out of bounds just shy of the 25-yard line. Got six or seven that time, depending on where they spotted. Good first down pickup for the senior 
Cole Wright. Good write-up in the paper this week from Todd Forrest, who had a good interview with, uh, with Cole talking about his decision to go in to, uh, to join the Army. And I think Cole is pretty excited about it. Six-yard pickup from him. That's second and four. Now going to throw the ball far side and through the hands of the intended receiver incomplete. Bring up third and four. That looks like Cannon Hemphill on the far side. A little rifle shot right through his hands. Cole was basically offered the scholarship many months ago back in the summer, apparently. But I think just like any wise kid was shrewd kid was trying to see what else might be out there and I think he just decided this was a pretty good opportunity. Third and four now trying to get the first down. Cole plants and throws Kyle Marlock. Catches the ball at the 35 over the 40 near the 45 yard line. That's the sophomore Kyle Morlock who's had some nice moments in the 2017 season. Big kid, good hands. He's caught several touchdowns and he's got a first down for the Panthers at the 44. Good throw and catch that time. Look good. Panthers back to work now, first and 10. Cole's going to keep it up to the 40. 45 looking for blocking, 50, 45. He's gone. He's going all the way for a touchdown, but there's a flag back at the 50, and it is going to be on us. Somebody blocked in an illegal fashion, or perhaps we had an illegal man downfield there. I'm seeing the referees pointing at Union. That one is going to come back. Cole Wright took that one 56 yards, but all the referees are sort of waving them on back. And let's see what we got. All right, so you got your garden variety hold. Hold on the Panthers. <laughs> I looked at two or three of them standing right there as Cole was waving goodbye and heading for a touchdown. And they just had their hands on their hips as if to say, man, I hope that wasn't on me. I hope that was on you. As it wipes out a, another great touchdown for Cole. So that's going to knock us back to the 39. Take six points off the board. It will take about five yards off the down and distance. Won't do much to the down, but it'll do a lot for the distance. 39-yard line, going to fake the give to Cole Dockery. Going to throw a little screen pass, caught Petit, 45, and tackle just short of the 50. So we've got a lot of that yardage back, where it will be second and manageable as Austin Petit, the senior, gets us near midfield. Panthers moving quickly. We're just two and a half minutes into the second quarter. We lead it 10 to seven. We scored 10 in the first quarter. Fannin scored a touchdown just seconds ago. Second and six now after the long run by Petit and Cole Wright moving this way. Now he's gonna run it. He's up to the 50 yard line. And now first down yardage, cuts back and is tackled right at the 40 yard line. Shoestring tackle by Cole Earls on Cole Wright. And boy. Cole just went 180 degrees. He just went the other direction. Just joystick from the left to the right. And had it not been for Earl's timely tackle, I think he could have taken that one about as far as he did on the penalty play. Nonetheless, it's first and 10 at their 41-yard line. Panthers driving again and not meeting a whole lot of resistance. We have punted once tonight. Back to pass Cole. Two-step drop. Going to throw a little floater. we got Kyle Morlock. And there's going to be a flag on the incomplete pass. Morlock got tied up that time with Fannin County's, I believe that's uh, Austin Brown. A little loft pass there for Kyle, and it looked like the two of them were just sort of running step by step. It was overthrown by about five yards, but maybe we're going to find out that that's because the other kid was holding us. And it is going to be pass interference against Austin Brown, and that will move us that much closer to the goal line. So 26, that's where it's spotted now. Getting a little bit colder now. You feel a gust of wind coming through the press box, and you're starting to see the whatever coats we're sitting on aluminum stands are now on cold bodies. Clock stopped at 8.50. First and 10 from the 26-yard line. Glad to have you with us here on WJRB 95.1 FM. Snap to Cole. Quick hitter that time, caught at the 25. Now the 20-yard line tackled up near the 10-yard line. That's Cole Dockery 
the senior using all that strength. And I tell you what, that kid got a lot bigger over the offseason, and it has paid off for him as that screen pass is going to get us up near the 10-yard line where it will be another first down. Ball marked at the 11. Panthers looking for their third score of the evening. Cole Wright back with Cole Dockery. Going to give the ball to Cole. Oh, no, Cole Wright's going to keep it, and he's going to hit the five-yard line, going to go into the end zone for a touchdown. A great sell to Cole Dockery, and Cole Wright kept it. Went up the middle and then cut back to the left, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. And the Panthers lead 16 to seven with Brian Smith out to extend that lead. Cole Wright just does all the little things well. He's got a great little uh, play action. Fake on the give. He's had a lot of success with that over the last year and a half. Here's Brian Smith, this will be his Third opportunity of the night to score a point for the Panthers, but before he can do it, we've got a flag thrown on both sides. A little, little penalty there on the defense that won't amount to a whole lot. As Brian Smith waits. Brian Smith is good at waiting because, again, we uh, draw more penalties on the defense on special teams than any team that has ever been assembled. And each week I tell myself, I'm going to ask Brian Allison what this is all about. I keep forgetting. Anyway, about a half yard closer for Brian Smith to uh, put the extra point through, and he does. 8.28 left in the second quarter. We are now leading at 17-7, to and we're back in 60 seconds on WJRB. Cole Wright has scored to make it 21, or 17 to seven rather. And uh, now gonna scoop it up the middle with Brian Smith. Hits a big divot and is gonna be taken at the 12 yard line. We're on him quickly, but still dancing around his fan and up to the 20, 21 yard line. And that's where the next Rebel drive will start. Fannin County known regionally and nationally for being one of the last holdout schools to bring the Confederate Stars and Bars out on the uh, out on the football field at the beginning of the game. But tonight it was American flags, and I just uh, haven't followed it closely enough to know whether this is a, a brand new thing or whether they started off the season that way. Because I do believe they were still bringing out the, uh, the flag last year. They were definitely two years ago. But still playing Dixie there in the band, and I'm a lot of folks still love it. First and 10 from the 21. And up the middle is Jacobs up over the 25 to the 26 yard line. Del Ruff, a senior on defense, making the play that time. I haven't seen him a whole lot on defense this year. Four yards that time for Jacobs, who is uh, the guy racking up all the stats for Fannin. Now the snap and the shotgun, and there's Jonah Henry, and he's looking for blocks, and is going to be tackled short of the 30. And it's going to bring up third down. Looks like Sean Dobbins was in the stack that time. So third down. And should we stop them here, that really would be a nice thing to get our offense back on the field because we're moving the ball very well against Fannin so far. 17 to seven, we lead by 10, but it feels like it should be more than that. 
Cardinals were not meeting any resistance on offense. Now Jacobs can take it himself, looking for first down yardage and is close. Over the 30, 31 yard line, did they give him enough? Matthew Bicey, Brian Nelson. And they're gonna move the ball, they're gonna leave it there. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're gonna call that fourth down. It's gonna be fourth down and a smidge for Fannin. I don't see any new personnel coming out on the field, so a dangerous moment here for Fannin. They may have the quarterback punted. They may try to draw us off. I'd just be awfully surprised if they run and get stuffed right here. Fourth down. Snap to Jacobs, running straight ahead, and he looks like he's going to get it. He's a big kid. He was met by Del Ruff and also uh, Jackson Colwell, but he is going to have enough for a first down. And that kid knew exactly what he was going to do as soon as he got it. It didn't matter whether he had a block or not. He was going straight up the middle and was going to crawl all over his center, and he got enough for the first down. Bannon now with a 33-34 of Union. Battle of 515. We've won it the last three years. It was a real schoolyard shootout back in 2013. That was Joe Mancuso's first time as a quarterback. Remember that game well. Fannin had some good kids that year. They were not a bad team. First and 10 from the 33. Now going to give the ball to Henry, and Henry doesn't get much. Maybe the 37, 38. R.J. Banton there in the middle. Del Ruff again. We're under six minutes now, heading toward halftime. Tim Hunter promised me either somebody good, if not, it would be him that I would interview at halftime. I thought that was a great sales effort. Second and nine now. Gonna give the ball to Henry again, and Henry is gonna be hit hard. Squirts forward to the 35, 36, gonna bring up third and very long for Fannin. As the Panthers plug in the holes pretty good there between the tackles. Nathaniel Ledford, big 74. He's a young guy, just a sophomore. Tell you what, man, he might end up being a pretty darn good player for us, not that he isn't now. Third and eight. Bannon got to hit the 43. Passing down, we'll see if they do that. Man in motion. Yeah, we got some jumping in the backfield. That's going to cost them five, I think. They had two guys um, in jittering at the same time. You can't do that. And back to the 30, and definitely a passing down this time. As Krieger does a little math here. Thirteen yards for a first down. They're going to run the ball and looking for yardage and a little bit over the near the 35, 38, 39, 40 yard line is Jacobs, but he's going to be about three yards short. We'll see what uh, Jim Pavo for Fannin County, the head coach, decides to do, and it looks like they're going to kick the ball away. Panthers have stood up once again. Jacobs nearly got the yardage that he needed, but not quite enough. And we'll take it. Clock now under four minutes in the first half. We lead it 17 to seven. We won this ball game 63 to 39 last year. The year before that, we won by 28. The year before that, I think it was even worse. Now a lot of whistles out there as the wind starts to pick up a little bit here in Blairsville. What do we got? We've got a timeout called by Fannin County. And maybe they're thinking that they might not punt. It's just fourth and two. Once again, really the talk of Mountain football has been Towns County as they won a football game just a couple of weeks ago against Athens Christian for their fourth win of the year, or their third win of the year. And should they win tonight and go four and five and then win next week at Heber and Christian to go five and five, it's kind of crazy the way they do it in Class A particularly with that public school, private school thing, that, they're, that they turn to power rankings. So a very subjective way of deciding 
who gets into the playoffs, but uh, Towns County, if they were to knock off Lakeview, would do themselves a huge favor. They're definitely pulling for our Indians. Down the dial and down the street. That's a Mark Moat production. Taught uh, John Moon everything he knows. Fourth and two. And now they're going to go for it, and we're going to hit him in the backfield, and we're going to knock him down, and it's going to be a turnover on downs as the Panther defense never gave Corey Jacobs a shot. And look at Brian Allison jumping up and down out there. He's a fired-up guy. Brian Nelson going to get credit for the tackle there, but it was two or three kids that slowed down the big boy Jacobs. We hit him right away as he was trying to sweep around the left side and just never was able to turn it upfield. And an interesting call from Jim Pavo. I am going to second guess that one. This game is still very close and anything could happen. And now he's given Union a chance to go up uh, three scores here. And the way we're going, we very well may do it. So 338 as we take the ball over on his side of the field at the 37-yard line. Now Cole Wright going to throw the ball, going to be caught at the 34. Cannon Hemphill, it looks like. And a kid rides him out of bounds up near the 32, 31-yard line. Tackle made that time by Bailey White, DB for the Rebels of Fannin County. Okay, so they didn't get quite as far as I thought. They only got to the 34. Four-yard pickup for Cannon. Second and six. That buzzard back there with uh, Cole. He's going to fake it to uh, buzzard, and now Cole's going to keep it, 30-yard line, and near the first down marker, which is about the 28. It looks like he very well may have it. Over on the near side, it looks as if they want to spot the ball at the 27-yard line. And that will be enough for a first down. Panthers continue to move the ball easily against Bannon County. Trying to make this just a 10-point margin, trying to add to that. Snap now, Cole looks to throw. Plenty of time, now flushed out, coming around this way. They're trying to contain him. He's going to run it, 30, 28-yard line, back to the line of scrimmage that time after he's knocked down by Keenan Putnam of Fannin County. So no pickup there that time. And it's second and 10. Cole back there had a lot of time and just decided to run, which with Cole is not an act of desperation, but often a, an act of inspiration. Didn't get much that time. Matter of fact, didn't get anything. Man in motion now is Logan Dyer, the senior in the football game. Cole's going to throw the ball to Chad Buzzard. Caught at the 28. Makes a nice spin move at the 25. Makes another cut at the 20. Nice run, Chad Buzzard. Going to pick up seven, eight yards and get close to that first down marker. He's up over the 20-yard line. Nice move, Chad Buzzard. He's just a junior. Ball at the 19. Got to get another couple for this uh, first down here on third down. We're two minutes left in the half. Going to give the ball and a squirt for room. Right there in the middle, and both sides rugby scrumming each other. Did he get enough? And it looks like they're going to spot that at the uh, 17. And are they telling the sticks to move? Or Yeah, yeah, the sticks are moving. That's a first down for Union. So a nice effort there. Ball at the 17. Clock on the move. We're at 145. Cole right now in the backfield by himself. He's got five eligible receivers. Two-step drop, going to throw the ball, and it's going to be caught by Sawyer Drake at the 10 at the 5 and near the goal line, just short at the one-yard line. Sawyer Drake, his first catch tonight, nearly took it in for a touchdown. Good little slant route. Cole hit him right in the hands in stride. And Sawyer was almost able to beat the fella into the end zone, couldn't, but it's going to be first and goal from right at the goal line. Now going to give the ball to Buzzard, and Buzzard looking for the end zone, and he finds it right up the middle. Touchdown, Union County. It was set up on a fine throw and catch from Cole Wright to Sawyer Drake. 
And Chad Buzzard puts the exclamation point on it. And it's now 23 to seven. Panthers looking awfully crisp on offense and on defense. Brian Smith out for his sixth point of the night should this extra point sail through. Snap down, kick plenty of leg, and good again. 24 to seven with 122. Panthers lead it, and we're back in 60 seconds. Union General brings you the Panthers on WJRB. Welcome back, Panther fans. Brian Smith to kick off once again. Really hit that one hard. And that ball nearly sails through the uprights. Maybe his best kickoff of the season. And it looked like he even stuttered as he was getting ready to kick it. Boy, what a terrific leg. So the Panthers, a comfortable, if you want to call it that, 17-point lead here on senior night. 15 guys playing their final football game here in Blairsville. Always a bittersweet night. So here's Fannin to see if they can do any last second damage here. Going to give the ball to Jacobs. And he's going to run over a guy up over the 25, 30, 31, 32 yard line. Chayton Schaefer. Jacobs is a, an effective ball carrier, but we uh, probably made the defensive stop of the night on the last possession where he was going for it on fourth and two. And we were able to hit him in the backfield and keep him from reaching the line of scrimmage, took over on downs and scored an important touchdown. But here's Jacobs again. And Jacobs running angry over the 36, 37 yard line. Jackson Colwell, who's made a lot of tackles here tonight. Jackson, just a junior. I know uh, Coach Allison wants to see him improve and become a, a big force in the linebacking core next year. Here's Jacobs one more time. This time we're going to hit him for a loss. Going to hit him for a loss that time. Nathaniel Ledford and R.J. Banton. And we're at uh, 30 seconds left in the half. I think at this point, Fannin is content to either kneel it out or let the clock run out, depending if they can. And we're going to go into the locker room up 17 points against our rival Fannin County. Promise to have an entertaining and enlightening halftime uh, show for you here. Bannon's going to have to snap it one more time, but they don't look like they have any desire to do much with it. This is going to be a quarterback keeper, and Jackson Colwell is going to make a solo, a, a solo tackle right at the 31, and that's going to take us to three zeros. So the Union County Panthers come out strong and have stayed strong and lead it 24 to 7. A, a touchdown run from Cole Dockery, a touchdown run from Cole Wright, and a touchdown run from Chad Buzzer. Those were our three scores. Brian Smith kicked a 27-yard field goal right out of the gate. And we may end up playing another play. Uh, I think there might have been a flag. And now they're going to send the kids to the locker room. So uh, all the confusion has been cleared up as far as they're concerned, but not as far as we're concerned. And we're going to step away, try to figure out what that was all about, and come back with a halftime interview. And we will do that in three short minutes. WJRB, Young Harris, glad to be bringing you Panther football all season long, exclusively, all 10 games, and also on WJRBradio.com. Thanks to Union General. 
bringing you the Panthers in 2017. Welcome back, Panther fans, to Mike G. Colwell Community Stadium in Blairsville, Georgia, as we watch the Fannin County Rebel Band at halftime. It's 24 to seven. Panthers lead it over the Rebels. Three rushing touchdowns and a field goal. And that's where we get the 24. They were able to power in from 10 yards with a touchdown of their own early in the second quarter. And that made it 24 to seven. Well, there's always a rating spike when Tim Hunter is our halftime guest. And uh, Tim informs me that uh, he majored in applied mathematics in college. Uh, Tim, why don't you tell me a little bit about why you chose that and what little of that you still remember? I still remember more of it than you can imagine. I <laughs> mess with that, that, that I, I don't, I'm not yeah, imagining I'm, a whole lot, Tim. Yeah, I, I'm, um, no, I, I got into that. I, I needed a major of some kind, and I enjoyed <laughs> Applied math. Applied mathematics? Yeah. They've got history there, you know. I mean, you got English and history. Yeah, but know. I don't like like the liberal arts. You don't like the liberal arts? You yeah, were never in the that natural kind of sciences, man. You've okay. got to be able to get a job. Then I also learned today from Patrick Smith, our intrepid operations manager, who is uh, one of the great uh, soccer players here and played for you 
I guess, uh, five, six years ago, that you were an outstanding tennis player. And I guess people who are, you know, longtime Union County people know that, but I mean, you, you, don't, you strike me as a, as a middleweight boxer. I mean, you know, you're not striking me as a, as a tennis guy. What was your game back then, buddy? Well, we got in, um, we actually had a really good time with it. Uh, we made the state tournament a couple times and, and the only uh, trophies we managed to put um, in our trophy cabinet for tennis were put on by uh, pa Packy's brother, Brennan, and uh, the members of the press box crew up here. Okay. But we got into it um, playing over at Young Harris College. And Jim Thomas, uh, who was soccer coach and tennis coach over there at the time, got us into playing, and we just thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, Unfortunately, we don't have a team right now, but one day we're looking well, at so Union does not have a tennis team. Now, we're, we're, we're looking into starting it at you know, some point in the future. Okay, well, very good. Well, you've seen as many of these. Well, no, you haven't because you're too much of a wimp to go on the road with us. But you've seen a lot of these uh, home games. And as a coach, I'm sure you feel a little bit of the pain for the senior class that what started off as a great year is going to end up being a 10-game season. And we haven't had a lot of those in the last five years. Well, one of your goals really um, is to send your seniors out in the, in the state tournament right. every time you can. Right. And we have been really fortunate here to do that for a long time. But what people don't realize is you look back in Union County history, that's not the norm. That's an anomaly. Right. And, you know, we've had, I think we've actually gotten a little bit spoiled to realizing just what a great crop of players we've had come through there. And these and these kids, not saying this season's been a, a letdown, our, right. our region is, is quite tough. Um, you know, and last year where they were able to grit out some of these wins at home right. against North Hall and East Hall, right. uh, they were not able to do so uh, on the road. So I, I do hate that for them. But, it, you know, in retrospect, when you really look, this this season is, is not something you, you know, would to me look at as, as not a success because, you know, Brian and his staff, you know, people don't realize how lucky we are to have Brian Allison here. Well, this the success rate that Brian has had in a mountain school like this is pretty well unparalleled. It really is, and I, and I want to ask you about that. I want to touch on some other things, too. We're talking to Tim Hunter, who is a longtime Union County athlete and parent and uh, administrator and coach and teacher. Uh, what has made Brian great? And I, and I get a lot of different answers, but I've never really quite got the definitive answer as to why Brian has been able to do what 10 coaches before him were not able to do. I will tell you this. I, I was fortunate. I coached football with Brian some of my first years um, coaching athletics at all. And one of the things that I took the most from working under Brian and that I feel very fortunate to have done is how is his preparedness. What he does to prepare both for practices and games, his overall organization. There are games I know that, you know, that, that we win one extra game a year in the film room because Brian is tenacious about that. And having really, really well run and organized practices, especially with as many players as you have out here, those are some of, of his strongest points. The other thing is he lives football. Right. I mean, that's what the guy, you know, the guy does. Sometimes people have hobbies. Brian has football. Right. Yeah, I always ask him in our weekly interview, well, so what'd you do this week? Nothing, I just, you know, watched a lot of film. And so I kind of gotten used to that answer. What about the wide open throwing style? I have not really associated mountain football in my long time covering high school as being a fling it down the field kind of deal, a, a, a kind of a plan. But no matter who our quarterback has been, and I'm talking about even pre Mancuso, that seems to have been Brian's thing. I mean, I, I guess that's been a different look. That is a, you know, what's funny about that is that is not in day compared to Brian's previous tenure here. Brian's previous tenure here, we had. We had some really, really strong teams. We had great offensive linemen and great running backs, and we were a more ball control offense. You know, we were going to line up and play conservative and smash you and and hold possession and then play solid defense. So that's one of the things where, you know, he's he's really evolved in that in that standpoint because, you know, the game has changed. This is not a situation where you win, you know, 21-14 because you're running the ball up and down the field. This is this has become with these spread systems a quarterback's game rather than a tailback's game. Talking with Tim Hunter, who is uh, firmly entrenched here at Union County High School, coaches a number of teams. Union County leads at 24 to seven. 
Uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Brian. I, I think that ultimately you've got to get kids to come out and play. I talked to my friends down at Towns County, and I say, well, what's the competition? I mean, why do kids not want to come out for the team? And the answer is always very odd to me. It's like hunting and outdoorsman type things. What would keep a talented player from playing on the Union County football team? Uh, that is one other thing that I really have to give Brian credit for. The fact that Brian platoons the way he does and starts as many different players on offense and defense because, you know what, for a coach, that's a hard choice to make because if you make that choice wrong, you know, that could honestly end up being your job. Right. And Brian had the guts to come out here and do that and start a lot of kids on both sides of the ball. So as a result, when you're at practice, your practice is much more meaningful because there's a lot more kids on the field. And as a, res you know, as a result, they're gonna practice harder, they're gonna be, you know, they're dialed in, they're, they're involved. And that is one of those things that I think he's done a fantastic job on is taking that chance and getting those kids out there. Because what you've seen that do is foster our depth. And when you see games where we're close at the half, you know we're going to have a chance to pull pull away as the game goes on, especially with teams who are not um, who are not platooning, who are are playing a lot more Ironman football. And that's one of those things. Like I said, I've really got to give the guy credit for. Well, let's talk about the other big issues surrounding Union County sports right now, and it's no secret, I don't think that uh, Union County is debating, or not debating, but going for a classification drop. Now, the way it has worked out, and back in my day, you, you flipped uh, regions and classifications every two years. Now they're on a four-year thing, and we thought two years ago that we would be in seven AAA, Tim, uh, for this entire time, but now there are there is a real push to move back down to AA uh, for the 2018-2019 season. And I guess we'll find out right after Thanksgiving if the GHSA approves it. Well, our school qualifies as a, a mid-level AA school right. based on their right. FTE enrollments. Right. It so was our voluntary election yeah. to go up. We, we elected to go up and play in 7 AAA. Uh, to be honest, you know, I, a lot of our teams have, have fielded pretty well in 7 AAA, but as, as, a, as a AA group, we're far stronger, not just at the region level, but it, you know, uh, advancing in the rounds in the state tournament. And what happens is when you're when you're got a school where you have 750 kids in it, and you're going up against a school with 1,200, right? You know, you see just the by surely by by law of averages, they're going to have more athletes. 24 to 7, Union County leading Fannin County here as we visit with Tim Hunter at halftime of the North Georgia Technical College halftime show. So obviously moving down to double-A does a couple of things. One, the good side, we get to play Oglethorpe again. <laughs> we get to play Social Circle again. I don't know that it would be those two teams, but I think they're still in that region. Uh, and they were, you know, patsies. They were cupcakes. At least they were uh, the last couple of years. I mean, I can remember calling some Oglethorpe Social Circle games and just thinking to myself, why, why are they even playing this game? Uh, <laughs> and now people like GAC are asking the same thing of us. So we're, that's a long way of saying we're going to be a lot more competitive, but we're also putting a lot more miles on the buses, and we're getting kids home at 2 and 3 in the morning, particularly when we're playing Monticello for the love of, you know, uh, you know, you know uh, the, the, the map maker. I'm forgetting his name, but, I mean, just it's so far away that it's going to be – that's going to be the downside, Tim. Well, we actually played Monticello in high school um, and when I was in high school here. Uh, and you're right, the downside of that is the travel. But I'm going to tell you, every time I've gone to G GAC, I would have gladly drawn, driven a few more miles to have played somebody else. Right. I assure you of that. Can't be any fun for GAC either. I mean, I'm pretty tied in with that program for personal reasons, and I know that uh, basically their season starts in the first round of the playoffs. I mean, yeah, and they'll just tell you that. But that's a whole different story. I know that when GAC was selected to be in seven triple, I'm sure there was a face palm moment for every other coach, including Dawson. You know, in this uh, in this region, so who gets it the worst on the travel? I guess it's going to be what a two out of three baseball sort of thing where you got to make two trips in two days. Um, probably, probably baseball, and you know, it depends on if they if they do any type of subdividing, which you know you're allowed to do at the you know at the, at right. the region level. Right. Um, and then basketball, you know, oftentimes plays a home and away. 
But in football, football is really not as big of an issue because you're only making half of those trips. Right, right. It's uh, five trips. And that's the same that's the same thing you run into in, in soccer and, and in some in some of your other sports. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk, uh, let's change gears a little bit here. We're talking with Tim Hunter. Uh, this senior class, I mean, you're a teacher here and you know a lot of these kids. Talk about this senior class, these 15 guys, and uh, just sort of how important they've been and, and sort of what citizens they become. Well, what you've seen um, with the with our, our class of these kids right here is, you know, they were not as heralded coming into high school as some of the classes previous to them. But, you know, they've really done a tremendous job of holding their own. And the thing about them is, is these kids have not only been integral players this year, but when you look back at our, our runs into the state playoffs and things that we've made, these kids have come in and and made a huge difference. Like, who would have thought, you know, who would have thought we would have had a quarterback rival not me. Mancuso not me. after he left? I and thought then, Cole Wright was going to be a sharp uh, come down from Joe Mancuso, and it wasn't at all. And you, you know, you look at this too, and, and a lot of what's happened has been based on his play. You know, and you look at, at Matthew Bicey. And Bicey has been a solid guy on the defensive line for us, and he's just, you know, he's a big old space and, and he plays, uh, he plays tough on the defensive line, and, and I think a lot of our defense really feeds off of him because, you know, they know he's going to make some tough plays for us. Got some pretty good sophomores, Tim. We've got. Uh, Sawyer Drake, who's obviously going to be a good player. Kyle Morlock is going to be a pretty good player. Nathaniel Ledford is just a sophomore. I mean, you're, you're much closer to the middle school program and the JV program than I am. What are you seeing in the pipeline? Well, I think we've got a very, you, we have a very strong program coming, especially at the sophomore level. When you figure, you know, we didn't even mention Pearson Allison, who is, and Chayton Schaefer, who are as strong as anybody we have in there. That is another one of those what I call core classes that you can really build your team around. And the other thing that's really surprising about a lot of those kids right there is uh, I've been fortunate enough to teach a lot of honors geometry, and a lot of those kids you mentioned, I have them in honors program. So they don't just they don't just excel at here. They're all really good kids. That's part of the reason why they can be so successful because you know a smart kid you can make adjustments. And, and do those kind of things. And, and that's one of the things that you really see from uh, that particular class group that I have seen firsthand is not just their ability on the field, but uh, sheer intellect and pleasure. They still teach points and geometry. Oh, yeah. That's a uh, and they still hate it. Oh, yeah. you know, that's, right. that's brutal. That's brutal, Tim. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, probably some of the standards that it's done. But a good thing, some of the changes that have been made in that. Basically, getting a you know almost private level education without the, without the fee. Well, Tim, I've enjoyed talking to you, Garland. We're going to get ready to take that second three-minute break. That's right there in big blue letters, uh, there in the halftime section of the playlist, sir. So I couldn't have outlined that for you any better. And when we come back, we're going to be ready to play the second half. It's Union County 24 and Bannon County 7. Thanks, Tim, for being with us here at halftime. And we'll go on to the WJRB. as many possible uh, opportunities as we can. Back in a quick second here on WJ. <laughs>
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Mike Colwell Memorial Stadium. We are a minute and a half away from starting up the second half. 24 to 7, Panthers lead the Fannin County Rebels. And I tell you what, I'm just going to drop this in there. I love Earth, Wind, and Fire. And the band has just killed that song all year long. I mean, I've got, you know, I've got a little funk in me here. I mean, people don't know that about me, but I love Earth, Wind, and Fire. And boy, the band has done a great job. And I always, always try to kind of listen to the, to the band play it because I think they do a great job with it. And this is their last opportunity to play in front of a home crowd tonight as well. So congratulations to the band. I think uh, our intrepid uh, production assistant, Chris Mathis, had uh, told me there were, what, what have we got, 15 band members who are seniors, Chris? Got 15 band members, five cheerleaders, and 15 football players, and I guess I'm giving short shrift to the uh, drill team uh, folks, too, who do a great job, and it's always fun to be out here at halftime for Union County High School. And I, and I think the really cool thing about our band is that you can tell the other bands sort of to sort of take notice uh, for what we're doing, and the other parents who are band parents are kind of into watching our band, too, so you know that they are well-respected and doing a great job. About 20 seconds away. And uh, there was a flag of some sort at the end of the first half. And uh, we are going to be kicking off. Now, whether we will kick off from the normal 40 or we'll be backed up because there was a, a last flag, we will, we will find out here in just a matter of seconds. So you heard Tim Hunter talk about it. The big story is going to be whether or not we will be a double A or a triple A team. Not that my opinion means a wit, but uh, I would certainly be rooting for a double A. I would like to see us continue to win. I'm a little bit uh, bummed out that um, I'm a little bummed out that we are missing out on the playoffs this year. After uh, you know, it's become an expectation that we would not only make the playoffs, but we would win eight or nine games in the regular season. Getting there. <coughs> I think we've act, uh, actually got a Towns County 42 to 13 score as I change course here in the middle of the thought. But nonetheless, uh, I, I, I'm hoping that we will stay in double A or move down rather to double A because I kind of gotten used to winning. And I think Brian Allison will tell you that even though it was his decision to, to move up to triple A or it was a lot of his decision to move to triple A, I think he'll be the one to tell you that he's in favor of moving back down to double A as kind of the premier sport here, the football team. I guess he gets uh, at least an equal say. So here is Union County to kick off from its own 25 yard line. It was a personal foul. And now the ball is gonna squib at the 26 yard line. It's Fannin now bringing it up to the 40 and hit hard right at the 40 yard line. And still on his feet, I think Chayton Schaefer might've gotten a lick in there. And uh, he's coming up a little slow. Who was that right there? Is that Kyle Williams? Kyle has been uh, having to put up with a nagging injury over the last couple of weeks. I don't believe he played at North Hall two weeks ago, and we certainly missed him. 42 to 13 is what I've got Towns County leading Lakeview. So Towns County on its way to its fourth win. And meanwhile, back in this game, we've got the quarterback well behind the line of scrimmage for a big sack. And Jackson Colwell, who's playing his best game of the year, is going to get a solo tackle for a loss. And Fannin just really trying to find its way offensively here. Union leads at 24 to 7, but by all rights, this is much bigger than a 17-point lead in terms of the domination that we have put forward so far. Seven-yard loss back at the 35-yard line. Back to pass, and the ball is incomplete. Alex Scott had a beat on that one. Our defensive back was able to knock it down and going to bring up third now and very long for Fannin County. And there's not a lot of pep in the step for the Fannin County Rebels. I can see the wide receivers kind of sort of very casually walking back to the line of scrimmage. I think they feel like that maybe this one is getting away too. Third and 17, once again, got to get to the 48 of Union for the first down. Back to pass, two-step drop, going to throw the ball caught at the 34-yard line. We're up on him quickly. Alex Scott trying to tackle him and finishes him off right at the 40-yard line. And a long way from uh, a first down. Clayton Schaefer, Chayton Schaefer rather, in on that play. Ball caught that time by Dawson King, 
wide receiver for Fannin. Fourth and 12 now. Let's see what Magic Cannon Hemphill can do as he gets ready to return this punt. Cannon, what do you think about backing up another five or 10, buddy? And the kick is going to be caught by Cannon at the 26 yard line. So he knew better than I did about how far that punt was gonna go. And Cole Wright once again comes out to lead the Union County team for its first drive of the third quarter. Chris Mathis, give me a one out of 10 on those French fries that you brought up. A nine, okay. I love those crinkle fries. Big fan. They got into a seasoning thing at other places when I was a kid, and I just wish they'd stuck with the steak fries and the crinkle fries. First and 10 from the 37. 20, 26. Now on an end around. They're gonna be thrown out of bounds up over the 30 yard line. Sawyer Drake, our sophomore wide receiver, trying to get something going here on the near side. <coughs> and down to the 32. We follow Fannin County and we root for Fannin County whenever we can. Jim Pavo is a regular contributor to our morning scoreboard program. Pavo, of course, being the head coach for Fannin County. And we, uh, we appreciate what he's done and hopefully uh, he'll be back again next year. Second and five. Cole Wright's going to keep it himself, banging heads up over the 40 to the 42-yard line. And that'll be enough for a first down for Union County. Owensby making the tackle for the Rebels. Ball at the 41-yard line for the Panthers. Another first down for us. Give the ball this time to Buzzard. Buzzard at the 40-yard line, jitterbugging for another couple. Gonna keep driving his feet and may have gotten to the 43 before he's pushed back by a pile of white jerseys, including Jonah Henry, who is uh, kind of a 60-minute man for Fannin. Now another big question here in the press box, is John Moon gonna make the Lumpkin County trip next week? Thumbs up from the Moon Man. All right, so we'll have a little TV action. That'll be doubling my pay for the night. That talent fee will skyrocket. As we used to say in the old broadcasting days, show me some talent and he'll get a fee. Ball at the 44, man in motion is buzzer. Gonna fake it to him, Cole right up to the 45 yard line and push forward hard. Tackled up to the 50 yard line. Gonna be just short of the first down. Gonna bring up a third and just a yard. For Cole Wright and the Panthers. Clock moving right along. We're at eight and a half in the third quarter. We lead it by 17. By no means have we cemented this win, but another touchdown would certainly lead you to believe that we're going to do it. Now Cole Wright on a design keeper and hit hard at the 50. He's not going to get the first down. He may have lost a yard right there. One of the few times all year long where I've seen a, de a design keeper from Cole and he didn't even make it to the line of scrimmage. So Panthers now on fourth down. And I tell you what, you can make a mistake right here and let a football team in the game. I know Brian is smart enough to know that that 17 point lead is not impregnable. But it does look like that we're gonna go for it unless Cole Wright's gonna kick it and now they're gonna call a timeout. So we're gonna keep the broadcast right here. 24 to seven, Union County leading Fannin County. It's fourth and one, our football at the 50 yard line. Applied mathematics tells me we've got to get to the 49 to keep this uh, drive going. UGA in Florida on our sister station tomorrow. That's Lake 97.7 FM, WJUL. We are your exclusive home for Bulldogs football over this side of the mountain. And we'll be on the air at 11.30, kickoff closer to 3.30. Georgia can really help itself out toward reaching the SEC championship game as it would make it almost impossible for Florida and some of the other contenders in the SEC East to uh, knock us out with only South Carolina, Kentucky left to play after Florida on the Eastern side. But throw all that out the window because every time you think that the Georgia is uh, gonna plow over Florida, they end up beating us. 
So after the timeout, Cole right back on the field. It's fourth and one from the 50. We fake a snap, and Cole looks back over. Is he going to pooch kick this thing? Is he going to go for it? My gut is we're going to go for it. Nobody back there for Fannin. They've got <coughs> kids up in the box. Snap it. Cole going to keep it, and he's going to get to the 50, and I don't know for a fact that he got it. <coughs> Where are they going to mark that? They're going to mark that close to the 50, and I don't know that he got it. I don't know that he got that. And they're going to bring in the chains. That ball is not quite at the 49, and I think the yard marker is right at the 49, and Brian out on the field, Brian Allison out on the field. John Boone, I think we missed this by a half a football, but I could be wrong. Let's see if we can get a little home cooking here. And it's going to be short. It's going to be short by about two inches, two or three inches, and Fannin County has stopped us. It was a design keeper, and that's as good a call as you're going to make. I mean, Cole Wright right over left guard. I don't know how you could call anything other than that. But they hit him, and they, they give Fanning all the credit. Maybe this will maybe this will energize uh, the Rebels' side a little bit. We'll have to see. It's colder weather coming in here and uh, starting to make its effect on our home crowd. As Fannin back out on the field. Fannin offense back out on the field. Two men standing together. This is Norton, the quarterback, and Norton is going to be tackled for a loss by Brian Nelson. Tyler Norton back out there, the left-handed quarterback for Fannin, and Brian Nelson eats his lunch on first down. That'll bring up second and 11. Very rarely do we uh, punt the football on anything over fourth and under fourth and two. Brian has a lot of confidence in his quarterback's ability to get that yard, and he's 90% right. That time he wasn't. Two-yard loss, second and 12. Snap. Going to give the ball to uh, Jacobs, and Jacobs is going to be tackled quickly. That time it's uh, Hogs. Who? That's Hunter Kelly. Hunter Kelly making a solo tackle on Big Jacobs. Well done, Hunter Kelly. Haven't heard much from him in the last couple of weeks. He's a junior. Probably will be vying for a lot of playing time next year. And we've got these guys back to pretty good third and 11. First down marker sitting out at the 41 of Union. Snap to Norton, the left-hander going the other way, throws against his body, and not even close to a completion. His intended target that time was Joseph Goodwin, but sails well out of bounds, and it's going to bring up fourth and 11. <coughs> Now, it was Fannin County that went for it on fourth and short back in the uh, second quarter, and it really bit them. And that we took the uh, ball over on downs and went in and scored what was a pretty important touchdown. So I think uh, Jim Pavo, recognizing that athletic directors look at these things, <laughs> has sent his punter out there, and probably wisely so. So the punt away, and it is a line drive scorcher. That's going to bounce dead at the 23, 22 yard line. And back comes Cole Wright and the Panthers again. The debate will go on. Mancuso or Cole Wright? Who's your quarterback on the all Union County team? You'll probably get two different answers from 10 different people. Mancuso is what uh, one wag in the press box says. Can't debate that, but I think it's a clear cut, number one. Meanwhile, we're stuffed on first down. Is Pearson Allison the designated quarterback for next year? Pearson has been in there a uh, couple of times this year, one time in a crucial moment in the GAC game. Crucial in the sense that you know it was still early in the ball game. And he did throw a really nice touchdown pass to Kyle Marlock, one of the better touchdown receptions of the year. Second and nine after the short pickup. Cole Wright going to throw the ball caught at the 25-yard line. Now 30 big hit and knocked the kid over at the 32 and up to the 34-yard line. Is that buzzard? 
Oh, that's Cole Dockery on the far side. Cole putting his head down and just trucked a young man from Blue Ridge. And that's going to be a first down for the Panthers. So Cole Dockery kind of got called out early in the game when he uh, cost us uh, five yards on a delay of game and has been nothing short of a beast on every single effort for the rest of for everything since. First and 10 now from the 35-yard line. We're under five minutes. We're at five minutes in the third quarter. Now here's Cole Dockery running the east-west. Turns up at the 35-yard line. Takes a pretty good lick that time on his own. He was hit that time by Mason Rhodes, and the ball is going to be stopped, uh, spotted at the 39. Four-yard pickup. Panthers not in a super hurry. I don't think we're managing the clock yet, but uh, not moving as blistering fast as I've seen us in the past. Ball at the 39-yard line. Buzzard in motion, going to fake it to Buzzard. Kyle's going to throw and misses his target, Austin Petit, at the 50-yard line, and that'll bring up third and six. We have not really thrown the ball downfield in the classic sense much this year. It's been a lot of swing passes, a lot of quick slants, a lot of improvising Cole on the run, but as far as planting and throwing that traditional 20-yard downfield ball, we really haven't seen a lot of that this year the way we did with Mancuso. I guess that would be the one difference. Not that Cole can't throw it. I've seen him thread the needle 50 times. And now we've got to stop, and the team's walking over to the sideline. And what do we got here? We've got a timeout on Union. We're going to call a quick timeout. Garland, wake up, son. It's uh, 60 seconds away from third and six on WJRB 95.1 FM. Cole Wright on the move on third and six. Going to throw the ball against his body, and we've got a chance to catch the ball at the 31-yard line, and they're going to say that he was out of bounds. A tiptoe acrobatic catch on the far side by Sawyer Drake, and they're going to say he just couldn't get a foot down. Came back nicely for an underthrown ball, and that would have been a sensational grab. And he actually did catch it, just could not get a foot in bounds, and it's going to bring up fourth and six, and the Union County punt team out there to boot it away. Still 24 to seven, neither team has scored in the third quarter. RJ back there to punt for the second time tonight. I wanna to see RJ get off one of these big boomers. It, it's, it's been a long time since I've seen a punter who can really hang it up there like RJ. And RJ, off the side of his foot a little bit, but still effective, bounced to the 20-yard line, now to the 15. And we're going to tackle him hard on special teams at the 13-yard line. That Pearson Allison down there, Cole Dockery maybe, got some trash talking. RJ down on the punt side was bitterly complaining that he got run into on the kick. But uh, no flag down there. Going to miss R.J. Banton, one of our better athletes and linebackers. He's a senior. This is his last home game. Ball at the 14 for Fannin. Fannin's got a score here. Going to give the ball to Jacobs, and Jacobs is going to fall forward. It was Brian Nelson that hit him first. Jackson Colwell in there, too. Got about two or three yards. Fannin has just not shown the ability to move the chains. They've had a couple of first downs tonight, but it's not many more than a couple. 
Meanwhile, it's 49 to 13. Zach Davenport has scored again for Towns County. That's his fourth touchdown of the night. They're midway through the third. Towns County getting close to its first ever state playoff appearance. Now Norton being flushed out of the pocket. Going to throw the ball on the run, and it's going to be incomplete. Nowhere close, really, as there were four uh, purple jerseys before anybody for the white one. Intended receiver was Jacob Hood, a tight end for Fannin. And that's going to be third and seven. Good pressure that time by Union, keeping Norton from really planting back there and surveying the field. Clock stopped at 3.44. We lead it by a precious 17. Neither team has scored this quarter. A little wind kicking up around here. Now back to pass Norton. Quick pass, going to be caught at the 24-yard line. Very close to a first down. Caught that time by Joseph Goodwin. And depending on where they spot it, might be a first down for Fannin. Mark that right at the 24, and it looks like they're going to send the uh, first down. They're going to send the chain gang on down the field, so a first down for the Rebels. <coughs> I'm sure Brian's wondering why they didn't measure that. Coming up on three minutes left in the third quarter. Bannon trying to put together a little bit of a drive here. The quarterback is Kyle Norton. Uh, this time a completed pass to the 31-yard line. We're on him quickly that time with Sean Dobbins on Goodwin. Quarterback now is Chandler Smith. Seven-yard pickup, second and three. Give the ball to Jacobs again, the big full back, and he's going to rumble to the 33-yard line. I think he's going to be a buck short of the first down. Actually, no. no they're, they're pushing the uh, markers down the field. Another first down for Fannin as they're putting together a little bit of a mini drive, bit by bit. Ball with the 34. Not in a super duper hurry as we get toward the end of this third quarter. Jacobs again, a couple yards. RJ Banton pushing him backwards from the 36 yard line. Maybe two that time for Jacobs. Panthers have done a good job, and the stats will show that Bannon has not rung up a lot of offensive yardage. They'll rough it on the play, too. Our senior, number 62. Two yards, second and eight. Back to pass. On the run, going to throw the ball back and incomplete. Matthew Bicey was all over the intended receiver, Jacobs. I mean, Matthew Bicey showing off some defensive back skills. The big 290-pounder. He nearly picked off that ball. The six words you never thought you'd hear. Matthew Bicey with the coverage. Actually, that would be five words. Third and eight, clock stopped at 132. Let's see what Fannin does here. Got a rush with Kyle Williams. Kyle forcing him out of the pocket. Brian Nelson brings him down with a sack at the 21-yard line. Chandler Smith was able to get away from one, but couldn't get away from the other. And a big sack that time. Going to bring up fourth and very long for Fannin, and the Panther defense has done it again. Fourth and 21. Under 60 seconds left in the third quarter. We put a little bit of a rush on, and we nearly blocked that one. It bounces at their 45 and takes a 
spin and bounce over the 50 to the 45 yard line and Cole Wright and the offense will take it from there. 44 seconds left in this third quarter. You can check out this ball game starting Saturday afternoons. Over under is 2 p.m., 4 p.m. Even John Moon has to watch a little Florida Georgia before he puts the, uh, the video up on RidgelineTV.net. Always enjoy watching that. I seem to get better every time I watch it. First and 10 at the 44 with buzzard in motion and a quick whistle is going to stop the play. And Fannin is going to call a timeout. Fannin's still very much in this ball game emotionally and mentally. It is by no stretch over 17 points. You'll recall that East Hall game, or was it the North Hall game last year, John Krieger, where we had a billion point lead and they nearly came back and beat us. It was the North Hall, North Hall game where the, the clock finally saved us, as Munson would say, because they just killed us in the fourth quarter, but we built up enough of a lead in the first three where we were able to withstand them. You know, I thought East Hall was a pretty good team until I saw the GAC beat them like 77 to nothing a few weeks ago. I really had a hard time believing that score because I didn't think East Hall was chopped liver. But that just shows you what a monster GAC is. First and 10 from the 44. Here's Chad Buzzard in motion as play resumes after the timeout. Cole Wright rolling far side. Plants, looks like he's going to throw it back this way. Now he's under pressure. Going to throw the ball and it's caught the 40-yard line. Gets a good block. 50-yard line, 45-yard line. And thrown out of bounds. And if that's not 15 yards, I don't know what it is. I mean, I can't get away with that. But anyway, Buzzard up over the 50 to the 45-yard line. Got a good block that time from our Colson Daniel. And we've got a player down. One of the Panthers is down right at the 47-yard line, but hopping up fairly quickly. Who was that? Is that to Alec Youngblood? Is that right? Okay. All right, so. Meanwhile, there was a penalty on the play, and they're going to bring it all back. Panthers have struggled with the downfield blocking. We've had a, a couple of we've had a couple of uh, brought back this year at uh, inopportune times on an upfield block that is illegal. So all the way back to the 39 for Union. We lead it 24 to 7, and this very well could be the last play of the third quarter. Chad Buzzard in motion. Going to give the ball to uh, Nicole Wright's going to sell it, keep it himself up to the 40. Got about a yard. And that is going to bring the third quarter to a close. Neither team has scored, which is good news. We've got 12 minutes to go. And we'll be back in 60 seconds to see what happens. Union General Hospital bringing you Panther football and WJRB FM Young Hands. Welcome back, Panther fans, to the final 12 minutes of the home part of the 2017 schedule. It's senior night here in Blairsville, and we lead it 24 to 7. And with the football, second and 14 at their at our 40-yard line. Now Cole Wright rolling to the far side, going to throw a ball, and he's got a man. It's Cannon Hippill at the 30, and Cannon Hippill is going to take it in for a touchdown. 
60-yard touchdown from Cole Wright to Cannon Hemphill. And that may just do it as the Panthers have extended its lead to 30 to seven. We had two guys, John Moon, back behind the secondary. It was just a matter of which one was gonna grab it. And the junior, Cannon Hemphill, said, I'll take this one. And really, there was no real chase for the end zone as Cannon went in pretty easily for the final 40 yards. And that's, as I said, gonna make it 30 to seven. Here's Brian Smith out to make it 31. And his seventh point of the night is up and through, and it's 31 to seven. Back in 60 seconds as the Panthers continue on WJRB. Brian Smith kicking off and the ball fumbled back at the five yard line and uh, bounces backward right off the returner into the end zone and it will be a touchback as Bannon will start off on its 20 yard line. We lead it now by 24 points. Nice little cushion there thanks to the 60 yard aerial strike from Cole Wright to Cannon Hemphill. I told you Cannon Hemphill was gonna get into the scoring column tonight. I thought it would be as a punt returner. This time he takes it in as a wide receiver and a nice moment for him. Fannin has not been on our side of the 50 in a long time. And our defense has really owned this football game. Here's Jacobs again. This time he's got running room and he's up to the 40 yard line. Now up over the 40 yard line. That's a 22 yard pickup for Jacobs. And shut my mouth. Here's Spanish County getting ready to cross midfield. Now on first down, incomplete pass to the far side. It doesn't look like Bannon likes to throw the ball a whole lot. A little uh, screen pass down the side. Down the line of scrimmage goes incomplete. Second and 10. One of the most beautiful views anywhere in high school football, right up here on the mountaintop. All the pretty lights in the distance. Got a little wind tonight, but not a shivering cold wind. Here's Jacobs again and running hard up to the 45 50, now over the 50 yard line, close to the first down. He got nine or 10 that time. And they're going to go ahead and eyeball that as a first down. And I do believe that's the first time in at least two quarters that they've been over the 50. Maybe it may be the first time since they scored the touchdown. Thirty-one to seven Panthers. Now on first down, here is uh, Jacobs again. Jacobs running hard over the 45-yard line of the 43. R.J. Banton and Pearson Allison there on the far side making the play for Union. Up to the 41. Brian Allison yelling at his defense to stand tall. Eight yard pickup that time as Jacob starting to assert his will and back to pass. They're gonna throw and it's gonna be knocked down incomplete. Chayton Schaefer on the coverage that time. Intended receiver that time was Jonah Henry. Third down and two. Now a big play for the defense. 
see what Fannin decides to do on this short down and distance. Oh, and now we've got a uh, snap to the up back, and I don't know that he got a whole lot. We'll see where they spot it. Got a flag down on the play. Fannin County didn't snap it to the quarterback. They had an up back, it looks like. But forget all that. There's a flag on the play on our side of the field. Referee's still trying to figure this out. Okay, got a late hit against Union. That would have to be, uh, I mean, that play didn't take a second and a half to happen. Somebody must have popped somebody in the head as they were walking away. Ball at the 26 after the penalty, and Fannin now close to the red zone. Going to throw the ball into the end zone. Got a man and overshoots him. Riley Barrett on the coverage that time. Good step-for-step -step coverage on Fannin County's wide receiver, Luke Cowart. Second and 10. Fannin really needing to score early and often. Now on second and 10, going to give the ball to Jacobs and still on his feet at the 20-yard line, going to bring up third and four. Fannin County, no interest in kicking a field goal. I mean, they're going to go for, for all four downs. Fannin now moving a little more quickly, under 10 minutes left in the football game. Jacobs back, going to give the ball to Jacobs. And he's going to twist to the 16, well, more like the 17. I think he's going to be short. They are going to say he's short. And that will bring up fourth down and one. Fourth down and one. Fannin has two timeouts left. We only have one. We've used two timeouts already in this half. As the wind whips up a little bit more. Awfully thin here in the home stands. And up to the line of scrimmage is Fannin. Let's see what they do on fourth and one. Going to give the ball to Jacobs, and he's got first down yardage and falls forward over the 15 to the 14-yard line. Another first down for the Rebels. Jonah Henry, the only player who has scored for Fannin County tonight. We haven't seen much of him. It's really been this, uh, the Jacobs show. Cody Jacobs. Big kid, number 15. Gonna give it to him again. And this time we hit him in the backfield. Chayton Schaefer wrapping him up right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe he lost one. And Jacobs looks at Schaefer, who, in, I mean, Jacobs is a good six, seven inches taller and just kind of barking down at him. And Chayton barking right back at him. Loss of one. Under eight and a half minutes left in the football game. We have a comfortable, but not a decisive 24 point lead. Snap, give it to Jacobs again. And uh, we're gonna wrestle him down right before the 10. I think that was Brian Nelson on the far side. Gonna bring up third down and some distance for Fannin County. Fannin just not able to explode on the big play. We had that 20 yard pickup by Jacobs a few minutes ago. But for the most part, they're getting their yardage on dribs and drabs as we're under eight minutes in the ball game. Third and six, big play here. First down marker at the four. Give the ball to Jacobs again. He's got running room. He's heading for the end zone. He's going to be just short. He's going to be just short. He's going to be tackled at the one-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down. And it'll be first and goal from the one. Here's
Here's Fannin County right on our doorstep at first and goal from the one. Give the ball to Jacobs. And did he fall in? Yes, he did. They're going to call a touchdown. He didn't get in by much, but I do think he got in. And Fannin County has scored its second touchdown of the night. It's now 31-13 as their extra point team comes out onto the field. We needed that last touchdown. I tell you what, if it had been 24-14, Really, this thing would have still been pretty much a football game. I'm not saying it's not right now, but it would take an awful lot to lose this lead. Meanwhile, the extra point is in the air, and it would appear to be good, and it is. 7.23 left in the football game. It's 31-14 Union, back in 60 seconds on WJRBF. Welcome back to Blairsville and exclusive coverage of Union County football on 95.1 WJRB. Bannon County has just scored to cut the lead to 17, our lead. We're on top right now, 31 to 14. As Bannon County waits for the signal to boot it away. And we've got uh, 10 guys right up there within five yards of the, and they're gonna kick it away. And Shaden Schaefer is gonna let it go into the end zone take it from the 20. I guess Coach Pavo thinks his defense can get the ball back again because I would have thought maybe that had been an onside kick. Particularly since they can't seem really to stop our offense on a regular basis. And Towns County has now won that football game 56 to 14 over Lakeview. That was supposed to be a pick em. That was supposed to be a tight ball game. Fourth win of the year for Towns County. Meanwhile, Cole Wright being pushed out of bounds. And I'm sure Brian Allison is saying, young fellow, we need you to stay in bounds. That's gonna take a Towns record to four and five. And should they win next week, and they will be favored over Hebron Christian. That's an away game. It does look like that they might make the playoffs. Good night for Mountain Schools. We're going to win this football game, and so is Towns. If I can get Garland to call a Hayesville uh, Waffle House and see if we can figure out what the Yellow Jacket score is. Garland is like, what? What, what are you talking about? And now we're going to throw the ball long, and it's a quack and duck, and it's going to go out of bounds. And Cannon Hemphill is going to catch it, but uh, well out of bounds. As uh, Garland informs me that there is no Waffle House in Hayesville, 28906. It's a huddle house. That's right. Third and 11. <laughs> Seventeen points. We lead it over Fannin County. This game is kind of bogged down a little bit. We're still at 7:13 left in the football game. Throwing the ball and uh, stopping the clock a lot here. Third and eleven. Here's Cole Wright running to the far side. Going to throw the ball, gets his body, and it's caught at the 35-yard line. And now we're still running room up to the 40-yard line, and up over the 41-42. And that's a big first down that time. And that's Sawyer Drake, the sophomore. You heard Sawyer in the pregame show talking about how the first four games he really uh, was kind of intimidated being out there, but has settled down quite a bit. First and 10 from the 41. 
Those crinkle fries are good. All right, gonna throw the ball deep, and now we've got a man wide open, and it's gonna be almost caught. Is that Logan Dyer? Yeah, Logan Dyer there, the senior, looking for maybe one last catch in front of the home crowd. Second and 10 at the 41. Panthers doing a lot of, uh, throwing the ball quite a bit here. And now ball caught at the 40 yard line up to the 45. I believe that's Austin Batie. Austin Batie whose fine as career is coming to a quick end. Of course we've got one more ball game next week at Lumpkin. Third down and seven. I believe that's going to be a Chris Mathis, John Moon, a caravan next week up in uh, Dahlonega, Georgia for our final game of the year. Chris Mathis thinks he had fun doing PA. Wait till I make him do play by play for the second half next week. All right, now we're going to throw the ball, and Austin Petit catches it at the 45 yard line, runs right through a couple of guys. 50 yard line up over the 45. And another first down for Union County as we continue to fling the ball around up 17 with six minutes left in the game. Union County on its way to its fifth win of the year and guarantees a non losing season. And next week would guarantee a winning season, seeing as how that's the final game of the year. First and 10 now. Give the ball to Cole Dockery. 45, cuts back, trying to stay in bounds, and does. Up over the 40, got about five or six. A lot of the Blairsville crowd uh, trying to beat that 515 traffic home. That old shoe factory road traffic. Heading to the Waffle House, it doesn't exist in Hayesville. And now Cole Wright tripped up over the 40 to the 39, 38 yard line, gonna bring up third down and short. We're now under five minutes in the football game. Panthers have looked good tonight. Always good to beat your neighbor here, the Battle of 515. There's some kind of name of the trophy here. There's a, there's a trophy, it's the jug. They, they don't do the jug anymore? Okay. Okay, so we're just keeping it no matter what happens. I got you. I'm sure that will thrill the fan and people. A little give over the 40 to the 37, 36 yard line. And don't know if he got it or not. And he didn't get it. And it's going to bring up fourth and two. We're at four and a half minutes left in the game. So let's see what we do here on fourth and two, John Moon. We're gonna, we fake a snap. We look back at the sidelines, just trying to kill a few more seconds. We're now under four minutes in the game. Cole's gonna have to get the snap here at some point as Cole Dockery joins him back in the backfield. And now we've got a flag. And I'm guessing this is a delay of game. Or did we call a timeout at the last second? Yeah, it's a delay of game. Back him up five. Fourth and seven. A good wind whipping around here. Like I said, it's not a blustery wind. Got the first frost on our windshields earlier this week. forget Georgia Bulldog football Florida and Georgia tomorrow on our sister station at 1130 97.7 FM now on fourth and seven back to pass is Cole going to throw the ball downfield and he's got a man caught at the 25 yard line and that's Cannon Hemphill still looking for yardage after the catch down to the 20 and Cannon Hemphill has really pretty much been the uh, the main guy in the fourth quarter as he and Cole connect again one of the better football games of the year for the junior, Cannon Hemphill. First and 10 now, and now we've got kind of a tight formation. 
And gonna, Cole Wright's going to keep it 20-yard line. They're trying to grab him. He spins around the 16 to 15-yard line. We'll give him about six. We're now under three minutes left in the game. Just a matter of whether we'll score or whether we'll just let it peter out in the red zone. Have we gotten all of our seniors in the game? Is there anybody that uh, anybody that needs to get in there? I know what, the big buzzard has been hurt, right? Yeah. First and 10, 16 yard line. Give the ball to Dockery. Dockery looking for room around the edge. Hit hard at the 17 yard line. Gonna lose a yard that time. Good pursuit by Fannin on the far end of the field, far side of the field. Going to bring up third down. Lost a yard back to the 19. Pretty fast football game for a non-running clock. Now we're under two minutes left in the game. Third and seven from the 18-yard line. John Krieger trying to keep up. It's tough. Fake it to Cole Dockery. Going to throw the ball and Sawyer Drake... Not able to grab it, incomplete. Stops the clock, fourth and seven. <laughs> so what are we gonna do here? Are we gonna actually try to throw the ball downfield for a first down or are we just gonna kind of run it up the middle? He's got Cole Dockery back there. No, Brian doesn't want to show anybody up. Looking back at our sideline for the play. Clock stopped on the incomplete pass. Snap now on fourth and seven. Cole Wright going to throw the ball into the end zone. He's got a man and incomplete. And we will turn the ball over on downs. Bannon gets the ball back. First and 10 for Fannin at the 18-yard line. This is probably three plays and call it a night. We'll be on the air next week in Dahlonega at 7.06 against the Lumpkin County Indians. We've played some pretty tough ball games at Lumpkin. Uh, at Lumpkin. I remember that 2014 game where we almost had somebody's head knocked off. It was a... Uh, Sam Gilbert nearly was decapitated in that ball game. I don't know if you remember that or not, Tim Hunter. All right, and now they're going to throw the ball, and it looks as if it's going to be caught at the 29-yard line of Fannin. Gets out of bounds. They were about to beat us, and Sam uh, had a horrible injury, and they, they uh, called uh, a 15-yard personal foul and threw the kid out of the game, who also happened to be their starting quarterback, which was a really bad thing for them. They lost their best defensive player and their quarterback in one play. As he was thrown off the, out of the game, we ended up winning the football game 28-7. This is a pretty tight ball game. We've handled Lumpkin pretty easily since then. Second and 10, throwing the ball and incomplete that time. As Henry, the intended receiver, and good defense that time. It looks like Cole, Cole Dockery coming over from his safety spot. As Fannin wants to throw the ball here in the final moments without a whole lot of success. Tim Hunter confided in me that uh, Brian Smith needed eight points to reach 100 for his career, and he's only a junior, and I guess he got seven tonight. So he's one point away. He scored 99 points in his career. It was Knox Kiernan before him. I wonder if Knox had as many points. That's a Todd uh, Forrest uh, project. Todd seems to have a real itch to, to get into the stats and stuff. I enjoy reading his blog every week. Third and 10 from the 18. And they're going to throw the ball near side and out of bounds, incomplete, now fourth and ten. So one final football play for Fannin County coming up here, unless, of course, they convert it. Ball hasn't moved off that 18-yard line in what seems like five minutes. 
will be joining the Clark Howard Show in progress here. And here we go on fourth and ten, and they're going to punt it away. Little rugby-style kick. Cannon Hemphill drops it at the 40, picks it up at the 40, and is hit pretty hard right there and loses a yard. And with a minute 23 left, here comes the Union County offense for the final time. What is the uh, the Jolly Roger? What is, what is that all about down there? Panthers? And oh, okay. Got a got a kind of a pirate flag down there. Okay. Soccer sort of sets a trend. Football just follows what soccer does. I understand. You give the ball to Cole Dockery, and Cole Dockery has nowhere to go. He's just going to fall down. And we will probably run one more play, and that will do it. We have defeated Fannin County in the Battle of the Jug. Where that jug is, nobody wants to say. It's, in, it's the Invisible Jug. <laughs> Why not just call it an El Dorado? Second and 11, we're throwing the ball, and incomplete. That stops the clock at 50 seconds left. As uh, we're looking at uh, pretty much barren, side, uh, barren stance here on the home side for the Union fans. They've, uh, they hit the road a long time ago. Clock stops on that incompletion at third and 11. Snap. Give the ball to a Dockery to the 40-yard line. The 45, the 40, one guy can catch him, but he's not going to as Cole Dockery is going to go 62 yards for a touchdown. Cole Dockery with 38 seconds left. Fannin was all bunched up there on the line, and he got around the safety and waved good night. And a great way for a senior to finish up his time as a Panther here in front of the home crowd. 37 to 14. And Fannin County can't get mad at that. I mean, what are you, what are you supposed to do? Oh, that's right. This would be the 100th point for, uh, for Mr. Smith, Brian Smith. That is, <laughs> it's a bad snap. It's a bad snap, and now he's on the ground. And, <laughs> and just uh, went right through Pearson's hands. I think that was Pearson out there. I don't know if we've got a backup uh, holder there or not. <laughs> and Brian's fussing at his son there. So 37 to 14 is how this game is going to end, barring some kind of massive return here. Congratulations once again to Towns County, who won their fourth football game of the year. And there is an outside chance that they're going to go to the playoffs. We are not, after four straight years of playoff appearances. So we're already looking forward to 2018. Providence Christian is where we'll be playing next week, not Hebron. I don't know what Vegas has set the line for that on. As Union County getting ready to kick off one more time. 38 seconds left. We lead it by 23 points. And I think we'll probably squib this. They're a little half-hearted kick down the middle. They're going to take it at the 15 and hard return up to the 25, 26, 27. Austin the team making the tackle that time for Union. And the ball will rest at the 30. I'm sorry, the 27-yard line. 
These two minutes have been interminable. But a great highlight there for Cole Dockery, who goes 62 yards on his final carry as a senior here in front of the home crowd. Big wind all of a sudden started whipping up in the last hour. Going to get some rain tomorrow. That's what this is all about. And Bannon's going to throw the ball, and they're going to catch it, and he's going to stay in bounds. Up over the 40 to the 43. Good tough run there by Fannin. And that will stop the clock on the first down, and it will immediately start as soon as they spot it. Thanks again to Garland Johnson. Garland with a big smile on his face. Today was payday. Can't get around the old minimum wage. Ten seconds left. Quarterback flushed out. Looking for someone to throw to, and it's incomplete with three seconds left. Good defense that time here on the near side. It looks like uh, Riley Barrett might have been part of that. And now one more snap in this game. As the wind is whipping through there. Garland is able to drive home safely in that big grand am. Final snap of the game coming up right here. Clock now at zeros. Ball's thrown and complete, and that will do it as Union County has defeated Fannin County for the fourth straight year, 37 to 14. A senior night success as 15 uh, senior football players along with their friends and classmates on the cheerleading squad and the band and the drill team wrap up a successful night and we improve to five and four and it will fall to two and seven. We will see you next week in Lumpkin County in the lovely mining town of Dahlonega, Georgia. Can't wait to be with you for that. So for Garland Johnson, Chris Mathis, and John Moon, I'm Jeff Batten. Your final score once again, Union County 37 and Fannin County 14. Good night, everybody.